said, um, I do some education for a ref and I, uh, also help my husband with our distributorship here in Wisconsin and run the education department here. And then I own my own salon. Um, but I have taught for a lot of years and, um, I love it. Color is my, I guess my thing. Um, I like to get a little bit techy if people like to get techy. So today we're primarily going to talk about the ref permanent, uh, color cream line. And that'll be kind of what we zone in on today. But I want you guys to know, um, if anybody has any questions about anything that I'm talking about, um, or maybe I skip over something that somebody's like, Whoa, slow down, back up for a second. Um, Natalie just jump in on me and um, it's not even an interruption. It's just, we need to back up for a second. Um, my, my goal really is that everybody that's on here today um, is like, okay, I'm doing it right. Or this was a great um, overview and so on and so forth. We do have some formulas saved for the end just to kind of quickly go over formulation. So if anybody um, if we've got time for that, I know Natalie didn't put an end time on today, getting through the color cream sometimes in an hour, depending on questions, sometimes it can take a little bit over, but I am going to share my screen and you guys can make the screen, the presentation big, um, or you can make me big. But the presentation slides um, should really help you guys out quite a bit. And we'll just dive in. Like I said, any questions, please, you guys type them in, ask them to Natalie. I, I want to make sure we everybody is good to go. So like I said, today, we're going to speak specifically to the permanent color line, which is our color cream. And some of the, I guess I would say, features and benefits of the color segment is that we've got 90 shades within the permanent line. And what I love about this is that the rough color line isn't so big that it's taking up so much space um, in my salon or at my color bar. And also with it not being so big, it means that I get to be a colorist again and create my own colors, my own customized colors for clients and really get to be more um, creative with how I color hair. All right. But the line also having 90 pre-made shades isn't so small that I feel lost, right? There's some beautiful pre-made shades um, if I'm in a hurry. Or, or whatever the case may be. We also have nine boosters. Those are included in the 90 shades. Um, the boosters we will dive into, but these are going to be ways for you to really customize the shades to your clients, okay? Whether you wanna really punch up a redhead, make a copper insane intense, um, get beautiful gold reflection, or maybe you live in an area like I do where everyone I that sits down in my chair, if they're not, if we're not tackling gray, right, we're tackling a five, six that wants to be an ashy, cool, natural looking um, eight, nine, right? So we've got shades that we can try to counteract um, colors we don't want to see in the hair. The line is 100% vegan. I love this. You guys know, along with the rest of the rough line, there's no testing on animal, which I think is, is um, amazing. We've got a natural olive green base. And what I mean by natural olive green base, so everybody's on the same page, is we all know, back backing it up to beauty school, that natural hair color is made of the three primary colors, right? Red, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when we make a artificial color, right, and we're trying to make a brown, we also need to use red, yellow, and blue. But we all know that artificially and naturally, the first primary color to leave the hair is blue, right, which leaves us with our red and yellow, which is some form of dark orange, orange gold, or yellow. And so what Ref has done 
is they've made their brown, that perfect balance of red, yellow, and blue to make a brown, but then they've added in an extra olive green. So they tick it a little bit more green based, right? So that as the color wears and over four, five, six weeks, as that color um, has a little bit of those artificial pigments leave the hair, we're left much more on tone and not so far away from what our target was when we um, when the client left the salon. So I think that that's pretty cool. Um, dye load, a 60% dye load. What we mean by this is how heavy or how opaque is the color. And if you think about it this way, if we took, if Ref took their color and made it a 100% dye load, the colors wouldn't be very reflective, right? The shades would be a little bit more mucky, murky, um, dense looking and not so pretty and light reflective. So we wanted to find that perfect balance of where can we get amazing gray coverage, right? But where can we still see this beautiful translucency in the colors so that the tonalities and the reflex really shine? And so for Ref, we decided it's at a 60% dye load, which I love because I know that there is a market or a group of consumers. Um, they're a little bit up there in, in the, the age category, okay, that are looking for a really dense, opaque, um, I always say it's like a, more of a shoe polish marker finish where there's this hard, hard line of demarcation, okay? And there are some people that really like that. I like that I have the ability to create an opaque color if I want to, but they're not all opaque out of the gate. They're, they're much prettier and more, more light reflective. So having that 60% dye load just seems to be that perfect balance to get beautiful gray coverage, but also um, be able to see the tones within the hair. And then of course, um, our color being gluten-free. Some stylists are like, why does that matter? They don't eat the color. I don't eat the color, but the skin is the largest organ on the body. And so people that do have um, a hypersensitivity to gluten or a straight up allergy, um, they will have a reaction if there is gluten in the color. So having a gluten-free line, there's no concerns or issues. So I think that that's pretty cool. So, when we're speaking to the permanent line, um, we've got some specific ingredients that are in the tube of color, okay? Not in the developer, but in the actual tube of color. Um, first and foremost is our aloe vera. I love that they put aloe vera in this because aloe has so many awesome benefits. Um, we know that it is super moisturizing, it's healing, it's antibacterial, it relieves itching, um, and it's super moisturizing to the hair and scalp. So having it in the actual tube of color, I think is kind of amazing. Um, this was a big one that to the clients, I like to talk to my clients about when they ask like, you know, why did you pick this color line? There's a million reasons, but one of them, and clients usually notice within two to three appointments, um, that if they got that tight, dry, itchy scalp, maybe 24 to 42 to 72 hours later, 48 to 72 hours later, um, where they were like, it was fine while the color was on, but a day or two later, my scalp felt really tight and itchy and dry, right? Um, having the aloe in there, they're not experiencing that. And it's keeping that scalp super moisturized. So. Um, that is the reason that it is in this color line. So I think it's great to share that with clients and let them know. Strengthening quinoa protein for anybody that watches all of our education with REF, this is our big daddy, right? So it is our protein of choice. It's a plant protein. It's what keeps our line um, vegan and also gluten-free. But quinoa protein, kind of the way that I like to describe it is it's the one plant protein that closestly mimics um, human keratin. So it has a super small molecular size. 
It has um, the amino acid structure is super close to human keratin. Um, it gives strength. It gives elasticity. It gives bounce. It gives shine. Um, there's just so many good, good benefits of, of having quinoa in all of the ref products that of course it's going to be in our color. So having that protein inside the color helps to keep it strong while we are coloring the hair. Low ammonia content. Um, this is a big one to me. I don't really talk to my clients about it, but I do talk to hairdressers about it because I'm going to get on my soapbox for just a second. There's a lot out there. It, it, it's kind of died a little bit, which is good um, about hearing about ammonia-free permanent hair color. And to me, that's just a play on words that because any, if you have a permanent hair color and it's ammonia free, then it has an ammonia byproduct um, or a derivative, or it has an ingredient in it that brings the hair up into a high pH level or a higher pH level to open the cuticle because that's what ammonia does, right? That's why ammonia is in um, permanent hair color. It's the only reason. Ammonia has one job to do. And its only job is to soften, swell, and lift the cuticle layer of the hair. That's the only reason it's in hair color, okay? So if I have a permanent line that's ammonia-free, it's an ingredient in there that's doing the exact same thing as ammonia. And actually, ammonia um, is one of the least um, products out there that people have irritation to. So, but here's the thing it takes such a tiny amount to soften that cuticle, such a tiny amount. That ammonia content does not need to be super high, but a lot of manufacturers have taken that ammonia content and they've went higher than really needed to guarantee um, or to make sure that that cuticle gets softened and swollen and lifted. But here's the thing, you guys, every time ammonia touches the hair, it lifts, right? And then it will close down a little bit on its own. It will also close down with low pH products, but it never closes 100%. And then when we overlap an ammonia product, it lifts it a little bit more and then it never closes all the way back down. Next time, more, never closes back down. Next time, more. Eventually, if we continue to use that, it busts the hinge hinges right off the door. And then we have an issue where color doesn't hold inside the hair because the cuticle layer has been so, I always say it's almost like punching holes inside the cuticle. Um, you don't want that. You want something super gentle, but does what it says it will do. So when ref tested, we didn't need this insane ammonia content. So when mixed with the permanent line, any of the shades, including our 12 series, it's less than 2% ammonia content, which I think is awesome because in a nutshell, it's a gentle color, but it performs. Anti-aging. So we've got an ingredient in our, again, tube of color that's called Thermos Thermophilus. You can try saying it a couple of times, Thermos Thermophilus. Some people will say Thermos Thermophilus, Philus. See, now I'm gonna mess it up. Um, so what you guys need to know really, what is Thermos Thermophilus? It is a good bacteria. So it's an A bacteria that lives all the way at the bottom of the ocean and light cannot penetrate it. So it's a great natural UVA, UVB filter that's actually in the color. So the cuticle's getting softened, the color's going in, it's going into the cortex and we have a UVA, UVB filter inside the hair, anchored on the inside of the hair, protecting it from the inside out. And then anyone that is using our care line and our styling line knows that we've got our color preserve system, which is what goes on the cuticle layer to also protect it from the outside. So we've got inside and outside protection, um, which is awesome. As far as shades go, we're just gonna quickly go through the shades just so you guys can see what the segments are, okay? So we have our naturals, 
These are our one through 10 shades. These will also be the shades that you would look at to try to match up to your client's natural existing level. Um, this is also the category that you will use if there is gray present in the hair and they're looking for a natural end result, okay? Our intense naturals, those are the point zero zeros. These are a tool that you guys will add into some of your formulas if the client has resistancy issues. Um, please make a note on this. This is the only segment that REF does not recommend using all by itself, okay? This is just an additive um, if you have resistancy issues um, with your client's gray. Some stylists will say, well, I, I use the zero zero all the time. I'll say, how much, how much gray does she have? Well, she's like 90%, but is she resistant? Well, no, but she's 90%. That doesn't, she doesn't need intense naturals. Um, I, I love that we have a tool, but I can honestly say I very rarely use it because I get great, great coverage on its own with the regular naturals. Um, so just make a note, your intense naturals are for resistancy clients and it's an additive. So it just takes over a portion of the formula, but we don't recommend using them alone. Um, our point ones are our ashes. These are going to be for more natural end results. Okay. Um, if you have gray present and you can read it in the little paragraph below um, each segment, it just says mix one of the naturals um, with an with a point one. Um, if you've got gray coverage concerns, but you also want a natural end result. And then we have our cool ashes. The cool ashes, um, you can see they're a 0.11, and we're gonna talk about what all the numbers mean, but these are an intense shade. So they have a much higher, um, less brown, and a lot of that 0.11, which in our cool ashes, our 0.1s are a blue-green base. So they've got quite a bit of kick to them. These are gonna be for the clients that really you wanna put 100, percent complete smackdown on warmth in the hair or brassiness. Our woods, these are gorgeous. These are kind of a pre-made neutral. So you have a warm and a cool mixed together. Um, these are really, everything on this page is very consumer friendly. Clients really are drawn to these shades because nothing leans incredibly cool or warm. Um, but they have beautiful reflection to them. So we, they, we've got our woods, our coffees, um, our Saharas, and our goldens. Um, also make a note on the coffees. Notice that you see a zero in the numbers. Um, for an example, 9.035. Because there's a zero in there, right? You guys are gonna get some gray coverage um, up to 25% um, using those alone. So if you have a client that only um, has very little gray present. You don't have to add extra of the naturals into this formula. You could just use a coffee and get beautiful gray coverage. Then we've got our fashion shades. So we've got our coppers, our reds, our mahoganies, our, and our pearls. All right, so anything in that violet, red, um, copper, lilac -y, um world, these are going to be those shades. So whenever I speak to a fashion shade, that's what I mean. Um, they're colors that wouldn't naturally grow out of our heads, okay? Um, and then notice that we have the Baeas. The Baeas, if you see, they've got two zeros. So, but they also have a 0 0.3, which is a gold. So these are our gray coverage tools if the client wants to be any of these fashion colors, which I love because for some hairdressers in the past, um, if a client, say a client comes in and she is 75% white, right? 80% white, 100% white. And she shows you one of these shades, let's use 744 for example, a copper, an intense copper. There's this little fear, flicker of fear in some hairdressers that, that right away they're like, okay, I got to figure this out because 
if I put in not enough gray coverage, she's going to have this flaming, bright, hot root. Um, and if I put too much gray coverage in, I'm going to brown her out. And she's going to be a browner version than what she wants to be. So Ref has made us the Baeas, and these are a gray coverage tool with gold in them. And what happens is we get that beautiful gray coverage, but then we get this gold reflection so that any of these fashion tones lays down over the top of it and you get to see um, those beautiful fashion shades without having anything look hot or hollow. Um, so I love that Ref did this for us. Some people will say, wait, so if she's a violet, I'm still gonna use a gold Baea. Yes. Um, you will still see violet. It's a small amount of gold, but it's just enough that you'll get the, you'll pick up that beautiful reflection on the tones that you're looking for. So make a note that your Baeas are gray, the gray coverage tool that you will use if a client's target and result is any fashion shades, coppers, reds, and violets. Um, the Baeas are also gorgeous by themselves. So I know a lot of hairdressers that love using these as a low light um, and 7003 just as a beautiful, rich um, kind of, I wouldn't, it's more of like a chestnut, a beautiful, rich chestnut as, as a base color. So you can do that too. We've got our high lifts, right? So we have our 12 series. These are going to be a high lift blonde. Um, we will dive deep into these, but for any of you that like using um, high lifts, um, we have them and these are some of my favorites. I play with these quite a bit. Uh, we also have our pastels. Pastels are one of our newer additions um, to the Ref Cream line and I love them. They have a more metallic finish and they are, you can intermix them with any of the other Ref shades to create new shades. Um, I almost think of them as kind of a, as an extension of our boosters right? And the boosters we talked about, these are going to be tools that you can use to customize and make um, each client's formula special, right? But you can also use them to kind of maybe counteract shades that you don't want to see. So you can see that we have a blue in boosters and we have a cobalt in the pastels. If I had to describe, notice that there's no level of depth in front of them. It's very visual. So I would say that our blue um, in the boosters is about a level, has the pigment weight of about a four or five. And it's more of a deep navy blue where our cobalt reads more like a seven and it's much more of a royal blue. Um, our green in boosters, I would say, picks up at about a level six and it's more of a piney green where our jade is much more emerald. And I would say again, it's more at a level seven. So depending on the amount of control that you need in a shade, um, I know sometimes when we're lifting from that five to a six, we're in that weird dark orange, right? Um, the sometimes I'll mix green and jade, sometimes I'll mix the blue and the cobalt, um, and sometimes I'll mix you know, jade with blue. So you guys have so many opportunities to create new tones and new shades. Um, so I invite you, if you haven't had a chance to play with them to definitely play. Um, I'm gonna use a couple more examples here just because I like to make the wheel start to turn. But if you look at Pearl in the boosters, okay, it has the pigment weight of about a level nine. So if I'm lifting someone from maybe a six to a nine or say a six to an eight and they want something more natural looking, if I put Pearl in her formula, um, it probably isn't strong enough, okay? But if I put Lavender from the pastels, um, it definitely weights out at a level eight. It's gonna have much more control um, and kind of the control I need of that underlying pigment at a level eight, okay? So just think about things like that. And another thing, when you're looking at like heaven and steel, 
within the pastels and then silver and pearl within the boosters, maybe silver's not strong enough. So you need to add a little bit something to it, add something to it. Sometimes the blue is too intense, but I could dilute it out with silver. So sometimes I'm looking for more of a sky blue. I might take one gram of blue to four grams of silver to create this sky blue um, when I'm looking to control um, orange or light dark gold. So you've got options, um, so many different things to be able to play with. And then also notice in the boosters, we have a neutral booster. It says neutral clear um, because if you guys notice the little green dots that you're seeing here, um, those depict what is available in soft color. So in soft color, we call it clear and in permanent, we call it neutral. Um, it has absolutely no pigments to it. So in the permanent line, you can use the neutral um, as like a lifting cream. If you use it with 30 or 40 volume, you can also use it within your one through 10 shades to create lighter colors and more translucent colors. So, um, and we'll talk about that more as we keep going, but tons of uses for neutral. This is uh, one of my faves. I use it quite a bit in different lightning situations. So when we start to classify the permanent line, what does it mean, right? So if I'm looking at a tube of color, right? I've got a number and then a decimal point and then a number or numbers after the decimal point. So your number in front of the decimal point is going to depict your level of depth, right? All hair color is brown, right? With a dominating primary. So a level one is the darkest brown, with the dominating blue, which gives us black hair. And a level 10, right, is as light as we can go. That is brown hair, but it has a dominating yellow, which gives us blonde hair. Okay, so our level of depth is one through 10. The 12s are not a level of lightness. They're an actual lifting tool. So hair color goes from level one to level 10. I joke though, when I talk to other hairdressers that I have clients that ask to be a level 55. I, and I hope some of you know what I mean by that. All right, then we've got our number after the decimal point, right? Number or numbers. So this is going to be what is the reflex? What is the tone that is being added into that color? So we've got our point zeros are natural. Our double zeros are an intense natural. Remember those are for resistancy issues. Our point one is an ash and that's a blue green base. Our point two is a pearl and that is a blue violet base. So it's a very cool violet. Our point three is gold, four is copper, five is red-brown, and six is red. Ref has given us our color wheels, which I love. Um, I think every hairdresser needs to pay attention to the color wheel and understand where colors live, right? Um, you can see this explains our gray coverage tools in our wheel on the left-hand side. So we have our regular naturals, one through 10. We have our intense naturals, right? Which are a double zero, which means they do have a heavier dye load. So they may appear slightly darker. So you can adjust your formula um, if you see fit. I know for me, if they're at a 50% gray and 50% whatever their natural level is, um, I will usually adjust my formula a little bit lighter if I add in the double zeros. But if my client's 100% white or 80% or more white and um, she has resistancy issues, I don't formulate darker. Um, because what you need to think about is if there's a heavier dye load in say a 7.00, but if I used 7.0 her first go around and she came back in and I noticed that it was more of a cuticle stain versus the color getting inside the hair, which would tell me that there's resistancy issues and the color was very translucent. 
I'm not going to have an issue once I use the double zero, she, a seven should look like a seven. The only time you would get something darker is if say 50% of her hair was a level five, six, seven, and 50% of that hair had a double zero come down on it. Now you're going to get a more dense, deep, darker looking color. Okay. And then you have your 0.003s. These are the ones that we said are the Baeyas. These are what you would use if your client um, wants to be a fashion shade. So a red, copper, or a violet. So you can see the 0.0s are in that brown, but they are ticking a little bit in the green world. Okay. Then our double zeros start to lean a little bit more yellow. And then our 0.003s are right underneath the yellow. So they're brown based, but then they have an extra additive in them um, to give them the different types of reflection that we're looking for. And then our regular color wheel on the right hand side that you guys can see, this is going to be where all the other shades live, right? And I just want to show you guys an example. I had a client or a stylist call me and she said, I had a client who is a level four. And she wanted to be a level six and she wanted to be a 6.31. And if you guys look at where 631 falls on the color wheel, and then I'm gonna back up a few slides here so we can look at a 631, which is right here, right? When I look at the swatch of 631, it's just this beautiful rich brown. And again, we have gold ash so it looks quite neutral, okay? But when I go to the color wheel, 631 lives up here in Sunshine Land. So the stylist used a 30 volume on a level four to get up to a level six, and she did 30 volume in 631. And she was like, I don't understand. She looked way more copper than, than the swatch. So remember, understanding where the colors live on the color wheel will really help you in deciding maybe there's a little bit of control that needs to go in that formula when I'm lifting two levels and I'm exposing that underlying pigment, okay? You guys, you have to hold on for one second because there, a speaker just turned on in my room and I need to turn it down really quick and I apologize. My salon is open today and they all must have just gotten here. So let's see, there we go. Okay, sorry about that. So yeah, I think in a situation like that, if I were aiming for a 631 coming from a level four, right? We know we're gonna start exposing this orangey tone within the hair of that underlying pigment, right? So then I'm gonna wanna come over here and see, because the opposite of orange is blue, and see what do what shades do I have available that are live more in that blue world. So I might put in some six one with my target six three one, so that once we lift, we expose a little bit of that orange. That six one counteracts that orange, right? And now my six three one can be the target that I'm looking for. So really use your color wheels because they will be your best friend. This is just an underlying pigment chart that we came up with. Um, there's millions of them out there. You can't really change the law of color, but I like the visual of being able to see um, depending on what level I'm headed to, right? Not where I'm coming from, where I'm headed to is what's the underlying pigment that I'm going to expose because that's the underlying pigment I need to try to counteract. So then our far right column lets us know what tone is going to counteract that. And then we can look on the color wheel to see what would be best suited, right? So besides looking at shades here, we also know that we have all of our boosters, right? We've got green, blue, silver, jade, cobalt. We've got all kinds of options to try to counteract unwanted warmth. And I guess I stress that because I feel like that's the biggest issue that hairdressers have is all of our clients that are darker, that want to be lighter, but also want to be in that more <clears throat> ashy, cool world.
Okay. So then we've got our um, color influence ratio chart. And this is, I know some people when they first start using the line, um, they, this is, this is beyond it. But once they've started playing with the line, they're like, okay, now I wanna know if I use a 731, how much gold versus how much ash is in it, right? And we all know um, based on other manufacturers, they all pretty much work the same. Whatever the first number or letter is usually has more than the second or third. So this chart just gives you guys an idea of how much brown versus how much tone um, or reflex is in your tube of color. So your point zeros, if it's only one, if it's a zero after the decimal point, you are 100% brown at that level, okay? Uh, point zero zero, again, you will be 100% brown at that level. But remember, we have a heavier dye load, so the shade might appear a little bit deeper. When we get to one digit or one number after the decimal point, we're going to be a 50-50. So whether you're 7-1, 7-4, seven, 7-3, one, um, seven, seven, you are going to be 50% brown, 50% of whatever that single number is, okay? When you get two numbers after the decimal point, you're going to be a 50-30-20. When we get into the coffees like we talked about, these were those beautiful neutrals that are very consumer friendly you're 70% brown, 20% of um, a gold, and then 10% red, okay? And there are some 036s and 035s. So they're going to be a 70, 30, 70, 20, 10, I'm sorry. And the 10 will either be red or red brown, depending on which shade you choose. These are the ones that you can also get some beautiful gray coverage with up to 25%, just using them all by themselves. The Baeyas are the 0.003s. These are the 90% brown, 10% gold. And then double number, same number after the decimal point. These are going to be your intense shades. So we're going to drop way down in the brown to only 25% brown, 75% of that tone. So we have our 0 0.11, 0 0.22, 0 0.44, 0 0.66, 0 0.55. We've got tons of them. So we've got beautiful, intense fashion shades. Um, but just remember, they're only 25% brown and then 75% of that um, reflex. How are we doing so far? Everybody good? Natalie, do we have any questions? We're all right? We're doing great. I had to wait for Paul to stop talking. We're doing good. No questions in the chat box that anybody has, but guys, feel free if you have anything, pop it in there and we'll um, get it addressed. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So then we get to our developers, right? So we've got in the permanent line, we have our 10, 20, 30, and 40. Pretty standard, right? We're always gonna use a 10 volume when we're taking the hair darker. Um, one to two levels of lift with our 20, three levels of lift with 30, four levels of lift with 40. Um, I feel like a refs developer has a little bit more kick to it, which I appreciate. Um, feel free to intermix your developers to create um, maybe a 15, a 25, a 35, different things like that. You can absolutely do. Um, I have some clients that I actually mix our six volume, which is meant for our soft color, our semi-demi, but I have some clients that I mix a six and a 10 to create something more like an eight um, for some of my men's gray coverage when I want it to ha be a little bit softer um, and not have the deposit be as strong. So you've got options on what you're looking to do. Um, and then your 30 or 40 volume when mixed with the 12 series or the neutral booster, when you're using them alone, you always want to mix um, one to two and a half times your developer. So if you use 
Um, the other shades you're gonna mix, your one through 10 shades, you're gonna mix one to one and a half, but all of your high lifts and in um, your neutral booster, when you're using it all by itself as a lifting tool, you'll treat it like a 12 series. So you'll mix one part of your 12s or your neutral to two and a half times your 30 or 40 volume developer. Um, you, the permanent color one through 10s all process for 30 minutes, okay? Um, if you have a gray coverage um, resistancy issue, you can go 45 to 60 minutes. The color is not progressive, it won't get darker. Um, but I would say your regular one through 10 shades are 30 minutes. Resistancy issues with gray can go 45 to 60. And then your high lifts, which are your 12 series, are going to be a 50 minute processing time. Mixing ratio, um, we just did this chart for people that when they first switched or first started using and weren't used to using a scale, um, or maybe they're converting from ounces um, or mills, um, this is gives you your mixing ratio. So I would say the average client, I do 20 grams of color to 30 grams of my developer. And then when I'm doing high lift, remember your one part color to two and a half parts developer, I tend to do the 20 grams of color to 50 grams of 30 or 40 volume. And then we have just a transition chart over there for anyone converting from ounces over to grams. So this just kind of makes things easy. Um, I know most of us, I'm not a mathematician, so um, the conversion at first, I had to like think about it, but so we just ended up making charts for people. So if you guys want to take a picture of that screen, feel free. Um, some people have also said, well, wait a minute in high lift, you would, you would, if you were doing the one through 10 shades, you'd do 50 grams total, meaning 20 grams of color to 30 grams of developer. But when you switch over to high lift, you would do 20 grams of color to 50 grams of lotion. Cause that seems like so much more, but remember when you're in high lift, you are taking minute sections and you are almost doubling your saturation. So yes, when you have a client that's a high lift client, um, you are using more color. Um, personally in my salon, um, my website and the way that we book, we have regular color services and then we have high blonde services. My bleach and tones and my 12 series are booked exactly the same. Um, it takes more time to apply. Processing time is longer. And I'm usually fin finishing off that high lift hair with um, a service to bring the pH back down. So my high lift blondes um, I charge more for than I do my regular one through 10 clients. Um, that's a personal preference, but just food for thought. All right. So great coverage. Some people will sit down and be like, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know how much of a gray coverage tool I should put my formula. Like, I don't know where to start. So this chart just kind of gives you guys a guideline. Um, it's, it's not written in stone. Um, it's just a good place to start. And then you can adjust your formula from there. So the way I like to look at it though, is if I sit down and I look at a client, right. And the, the way that I like to do it is like the diameter of my pinky, right. On a normal textured hair client, the diameter of my pinky is probably, let's say a hundred hairs, right. If I grabbed up a hundred hairs, Hopefully it would be about the diameter of my pinky. How many of those 100 hairs are gray or white or silver? That's how you start to pick, figure out what the percentage of gray is. Cause I think a lot of people just tend to kind of guess like it's easy on the headband client that's white on her hairline. It's, oh, it's a hundred percent. But I guarantee you on a lot of those clients back in here, there's not nearly as much gray. So you're going to get two different end results if you don't start really zoning it down and figuring out, do I need two different formulas? Because I'm dealing with two totally different types of hair. Um, but what I usually like to say is if the majority of the hair is natural and there's only a small amount of gray, that's what my formula should look like. 
the majority of my formula should be and a small amount of my formula should be gray coverage. When I get up into that 50% world where I'm like, she's like 50-50, it's, it's pretty sporadic throughout, then that's what my formula should look like. 50% of it should probably be gray coverage. 50% of it should be target. Then when I get up into the majority of the hair is white, silver, or gray, the majority of my formula needs to be gray coverage, right? Um, and then just really, you know, most of us with our clients, um, we know whether they're resistant or not, but I have a feeling with um, COVID and everything that's going on, like salons are seeing a lot of new guests, which is, which is awesome. Um, so there are going to be new clients. So really sit down, take a look. Clients usually know if they're resistant and find out. But if, if you don't see, um, breakthrough or sparkle on that cuticle surface, don't automatically think that because a client has a lot of gray that she's automatically going to be resistant because the majority of clients aren't resistant to gray. They're, they don't have resistant gray hair. Okay. So here is an example, and I like to just give a visual. Um, we talked about how we could incorporate the 0.00s or the intense naturals into a formula if a client had resistancy issues, or say that it's just three years later and she's starting to become more resistant, right? So RAF has a rule that you can take 25% of the formula and replace it with a double zero, right? Or a double zero three which is the Baiea. So here's an example. You have a client, she was 50% gray, her hair was normal, it didn't have resistancy issues. So you did a 50-50 on her formula and it was great. But say over time, she became resistant, okay? Then here's how you would adjust the formula, right? It's 25% of the color formula is what you are replacing with a 0.0 there is still regular natural in her formula. I'm not taking all of the regular natural out and replacing it with a double zero, not when you first start, because you, you might be amazed the very small amount that it takes. Some people are like, well, what is the difference with the double zeros? Why do they cover the gray? They have a heavier dye load, right? Heavier dye load is going to give a deeper end result. But as soon as we start to up our dye load, right, we also up our ammonia content. So it's still a low ammonia content, but it's higher than the regular one through 10 shades. Okay. So we are giving that cuticle just this little extra kick to try to swell and soften easier for us. So a very little bit of that adjustment in your formula can make a big difference. So don't just go gung ho in the beginning and like flip a client from a 7.0 to a straight 7.00, um, replace 25% of the formula with a double zero, um, keep the rest of the formula the same, and then go from there. And I think it's also good whether this is a gray coverage issue or any clients, when you make adjustments, you make one adjustment at a time, okay? And you tweak that way. Because if you change too many things, all at once, you don't know which thing worked, right? It's too hard to figure it out. So if you want to adjust the color by two or three grams, and I always say, if I'm using 20 grams of color, um, I will make adjustments within that formula by two or three grams at a time. This way I can start to make small adjustments without creating banding in the hair um, and things that I don't wanna see down the road. Um, and then same thing with developers. If I was like, oh, she was a 20, but I think I want to drop her down to, to a 15. Um, and I want to change that zero to a 0.00. I'm going to change one thing at a time. So I might adjust into a 0.00, see how that looks next appointment, tweak her over to the 15 volume, but make those adjustments in little increments and one adjustment at a time. It's so much easier for you guys to figure out what's going on and what works and what doesn't work than changing two, three, four things in a formula all at once, right? Um, my verbiage with my clients all the time when they come in is, 
I know what you want. I see what our target is. I'm going to try my best to get you as close as I can today. I want to see your color when, when we're finished today. Um, I will make some notes and then we're going to reevaluate when I see you in four, five or six weeks and see how that color wore over time. And then if we need to make any tweaks or adjustments, we will. This way, there's an under promise, but an over deliver. Okay. If we just automatically are like, oh yeah, no problem. They're sitting there for that processing time thinking it's going to be spot on. But if this is a brand new client and I've never done her hair before, we know that we could have 10 clients, all a level six, sit down and color them all the exact same formula. And they all might be slightly different, right? Based off body density, texture, underlying pigments, mayo, mayo felonin, fail melanin, all those different things are going to come into play on every single client. So I never out of the gate, I'm like, oh yeah, absolutely. Even though I, I'm probably going to get pretty darn close. I'll say, I'm going to try to get as close as I can. And then I'm going to keep tweaking and making adjustments until we get you spot on and perfect. They appreciate that honesty um, more than anything. And then they know that you are on a mission, right? So um, you guys can see how that formula was adjusted on the left. Again, 25%. When you keep your formula at that 20 grams of color to 30 grams of lotion, it's really easy to always figure out what a quarter of 20 is, is five. Um, and then another trick that I personally use all the time for my resistancy is um, I don't have a lot of clients that want, if they want warmth in their hair, it's like a high fashion color. Otherwise, all my clients that are looking for gray coverage are looking for this very natural, cool, ashy end result. So by adding in a double zero, a double zero, like I said, it ticks warmer on the color wheel. I prefer to just go into an equal parts with my color. Okay. So I'll use 7.0, but instead of using 10 grams of it, right, I might use um, 20 grams of it. And then instead of doing two, one and a half times my developer, which would be 30, I'm going to go drop down to equal parts and do 20 grams of color to 20 grams of my 10 or 20 volume. So going equal parts color to your developer automatically ups that dye load, makes a denser looking color, right? Ups that ammonia content a little bit, but I don't have that extra gold in there. So that's my personal um, one that I really like to do. And then food for thought for you guys when covering gray, all manufacturers will say use a 20 volume. Their main reason for that is the majority of clients out there that are looking for gray coverage have a mixture of gray and their natural. So 20 has this great way of fusing the two shades together, right? Like depositing down on the gray and shifting and moving around the existing natural color that's there and having this beautiful end result. So all manufacturers will always say a 20 volume, but when you are in a deposit only, that client is 100% white and you want to make that hair darker, right? Or even if they're 80% white and 20% of the hair is a level seven, but she wants to be a six, right? What would be a better de developer? What developer is meant to deposit down is 10 ball, okay? We talked about ammonia and it's one job, right? It's one job is to soften, lift and swell the cuticle layer developer, your hydrogen peroxide, your H2O2 has two jobs. Okay. Its first job is to lift and diffuse natural pigments, lift and diffuse natural pigments. So what that means is that's why we have, that's why as soon as we sit down and we figure out what their natural level is and what our target is, that's how we choose our developer, right? Based on how much lift we need. Its second job as a developer is to oxidize your artificial pigments meaning it flushes in that oxygen so that those artificial color molecules can come to fruition and we can actually visually see them, right? Form chains in the hair and do their thing. 
So if all developers oxidize, right? Hair color, artificial hair color, and all developers have a certain ability of diffusing natural pigments. If I'm looking to only deposit and not expose warmth, 10 volumes, my best friend. So if all I want to do is put the smack down on gray and make it go away, and I want a cool, ashy, natural end result, um, you guys will have really good results with 10 volume. If you haven't tried it, I invite you to. Um, if you if it makes you nervous and you want to tick them down to a 15 vowel first, um, feel free to do that. Um, I have some clients that I prefer what the 15 volume does. Um, and then I have a lot of clients that are in equal and 10 volume, right? So they're a 7.0 and 10 vowel equal parts color to developer. And I get beautiful end results. So there's so many different avenues you can take on covering gray because we all know that every client is a little bit different. So I invite you to try different ways um, of formulating for your gray clients, but make one adjustment at a time. Jesse, I have a, I had a question here. I didn't know if you got it or not. I had to run to get water. Did you answer the one from Trisha in the, in the group chat? Mm -mm. Okay, so Trisha is asking, what if a client is almost 100% gray, mm -hmm. wanting a soft, buttery blonde, so you do straight up 12 series or mix in uh, control slash reflect? She gives the shoulder shrug. Okay, so read me the question one more time. So she says, what if, a Trisha, are you on here? Do you want to unmute and just talk to Jesse? So she said, what if a client- I, guess, I am here. Oh, I just, Hi, Trisha. Do you want to just talk to me? Morning. What was that? <laughs> Trisha, you just want to ask Jesse something directly? Oh. Um, <laughs> I can try. But, um, so I guess I don't know how to ask it per se. Um, and obviously I'm very new to this line. So she's like basically hundred percent gray and she mm -hmm. comes in and she wants this perfect buttery blonde. I don't know. I can never get her to that nice blonde. So I guess I don't even know how to ask it. Like, can you, so is her gray? Is it like, is it like, like white? She's white. Like, okay. Yeah. So can I ask like what levels in the past with other manufacturers have you used? Um, I have done, I believe a 10. I'd have to look it up. Okay. And were you getting a buttery blonde or was it, you weren't getting great coverage or what was the issue? Well, and I know like she is two complete different here. I'm going to try and pull her up here. Um, she's two different in the back. She's darker, like a little bit darker, like level five mixed. There, there's a maybe 10% level five mixed in like inner crown. Okay. Um, so I had to do two separate formulas, but I finally found with my last color, you know, something that covers her good and she liked the color. And now I'm like scared to do it again and do it wrong <clears throat> and screw it all up again. Um, so I think in a situation like that, if she's got the headband temple area up front, I would go in. So in, in ref and most manufacturers, what we would say is level 10 to the permanent line is meant to be more of a, a toner your level nines will actually give you really good gray coverage. So if it were me, I would just go in with a 9.0 and 10 volume. If you want it quite right, qu quite light reflective, you could do um, a 15 vowel on her with a 9.0. And then in the back, if you wanted to do that 9.0 with a little bit of 12 series and a 30 volume, 
then you'll get your deposit for the gray, but you'll also get that lift on the level five in the back that will at least shift her up into a believable, you know, eight. So you could do something like 10 grams of, of um, 12 to one is a really nice. It kind of falls right in the middle of the 12 series. It's not extremely controlling, but it has some control because you only said you have like 10 to 15% of a level five. So I would do 10 grams of 12 to one, 10 grams of 9.0, but you're still going to treat it like a high lift. So in the back, you're going to do 50 grams of 30 volume. And then up front, I would do 10 grams of 9.0 to 15 grams of 10, 15, or 20 volume, depending on where your comfort level's at. But I think that that will get you into a buttery level, um, especially if you did 15 or 20 volume with that level nine because you're shifting and moving. So it's going to be a very light reflective level nine. It's not going to be a dark dingy nine. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Yes, it does. Thank you. Sorry. I have yeah, no screaming problem. kids in the background. So I muted you're myself. All you're all good. Okay. Thank you. So we talked about the boosters and all the different things that you can do with them, right? Um, having your silver, your pearl, your blue, and your green are going to be more of your control choices. And then your red, violet, orange, and gold are going to be more of your impact adding fashion tonality in. Um, please make a note, you guys, when you look at violet versus pearl, there is a big difference. Pearl is to neutralize out unwanted yellow tones. The violet is to add an intense violet to the hair. So if you're like pearls, not strong enough, but obviously violet, I don't want to turn her hair purple, right? You could maybe do four grams of pearl and literally like a pea size of violet to create something stronger if you want to. Okay. Um, but again, we're using the boosters and include the pastels in this. They can be target, but they're also great to use as a booster to um, enhance a shade that you want to see or to neutralize out tones that you don't want to see. Um, again, we use the 25% rule. Um, the only difference is that when we say that when we're enhancing, we, that 25% can go above and beyond the formula. So you can mix what you would always mix, right? So, so say she was a 666, so an intense red. So you would do your 40 grams of 666 to 60 grams of your developer. And then you would add above and beyond, you could go another 10 grams of red booster into that formula and whisk it all together. Okay. When you're neutralizing that 25% is inside the formula. So now you're going to take yourself to 30 grams of target, right? And then 10 grams of that can be um, a neutralizing tone to 60 grams of your lotion. So I always say, if you want to enhance and you want to see it, then it stands up and outside the formula. And if you're looking to hide or neutralize something, you're hiding your, neutral, your neutralizing tone inside the formula. So hopefully this diagram helps make sense. Remember when you guys are using your rough cream color, you always want to whisk it. Do not try to mix it with a color brush, um, especially if you are using boosters or pastels in your formula. You want to whisk. I could take two bowls, one with a brush, one with a whisk, and try to mix them together. The whisk, I guarantee you 100% will be mixed 10 times faster. Um, Ref makes super cute little whisks, okay? Um, always think this when you're mixing your color. You want your bowl of color to look like Yo Play yogurt. You do not want it to look like Dannon. 
Okay. Dannon is chunky. There's big chunks of fruit in it, which is amazing, but not in color. There would be nothing worse than doing a center part and getting a big glob of a booster in on her center part, right? So if you whisk, it won't happen. Again, here's just a couple examples of using the boosters in this situation, like I was saying, 666 um, to, they wanna really punch that red up, we could add. And then in a situation of a five, going to a neutral 623, we know that lifting from a five to a six, we're gonna expose some underlying pigments within the hair. And maybe she has strong underlying pigments. And so we need to put a little bit of blue or green in that formula. You can see how that formula has been adjusted to try to neutralize out those un unwanted tones in the hair. But you guys think about the boosters too in situations of, um, if you guys are getting familiar with the shades, like five, I love 512 with red booster, right? 512 is this deep, dark, and in the sunlight, you can see this really, um, cool violet tone, but usually only in the sunlight, but it's fun to add like the red booster to it, right? I could also add the lilac um, to it. I could add the violet booster to it. Anything just to give it an, a whole new nuance and a, this whole new feel. So um, I invite you to try that. Same thing with the coffees and the Saharas. You know, what if you took like 631, which is this beautiful, rich, um, neutral brown, but you added in a couple grams of violet booster into it to give it some fun interest, right? Or the orange booster to give it this beautiful copper um, reflection, right? You're, it's not going to make it, I mean, if you go crazy with squeezing it in and, you know, you weigh out 15 grams of a booster into your formula, but I always say, usually if I start adding in a booster, we always say it's up to 25 it doesn't have to automatically be 25%. So if I'm tweaking and adjusting a formula, it's two to three grams at a time. So maybe I was using 512, right? And I decided this time I wanted to give it this like new fun nuance or kick it up a little bit. I'll add two or three grams of one of my boosters into that formula to give it a little bit of interest but nothing that's going to make it go crazy and create banding over time. So you can just tweak and adjust. 12 series, I just wanted to, um, I just added this slide in from our 12 series class because I think visually it makes more sense to people as far as what the capability or what the strength of the 12 series is, right? So we know what the numbers mean. So we know what the base of the 12 series is, but we also need to understand that they start from very strong, right? In control and the amount of control in the tube down to something a little bit softer and a little bit less, a little bit softer and a little bit less, right? So you can intermix your 12 series um, to create new 12 series, right? A big one for me that I love to do is 12-1 and 12-2-1. I use quite a bit. Um, and then I also use 12.3 and 12.2.1 together um, because I can't leave well enough alone. So I like to make my own. Um, notice that neutral, I like to kind of put it as a counterpart to the 12 series because it does have the ability um, to give me four to five levels of lift um, on virgin hair but it has absolutely no tonality to it. So I always say, if you use like a neutral and 30 volume, so example, 10 grams of neutral, and then I'm always, if I use it by itself, I'm always mixing it two and a half times developer. So if I did 10 grams of neutral, I would do 25 grams of 30 or 40 volume. I like to use it with 30 compacted or um, isolated inside a foil. I can get that to look like a week in Mexico, right? I say neutral doesn't lift as high or as raw or as light as bleach, but it will definitely give you sun-kissed highlights for sure. So it's um, 
I invite you, if you haven't played around with the 12 series or the neutral, we're at that perfect time of year that we're going to start doing a lot more lightning work and a lot more dimensional services as far as um, lightening the hair. So I invite you like every second or third foil, sneak in a 12 series or sneak in a neutral so that you can see what it does. Because people, you won't, hairdressers won't use a product if they don't know what it does. And this is one of the products that a lot of hairdressers just won't do it. They're like, I don't use it because I, I don't use it. I don't know what it'll do. So the only way you will is to use it. So I challenge you guys to um, the next foil that you have, every fo a foil client, the next, you know, every second or third, just sneak in a little weave of a 12 series or a neutral um, so you can see what it does. Another great way to do it is parietal ridge down like still have all of her bleach work up top above parietal ridge, but maybe parietal ridge lower every second or third foil, sneak in a neutral or a 12 series. And that way you'll see what it does. And then there won't be any surprises or I don't use it because I don't know what it does. Now you'll be able to go, I know what that looks like. And that was actually really pretty. So um, food for thought. Jesse, I know you got some great in, uh, feedback on this graphic when you did the high lift for us last week and Gino just um, chimed in and somebody else as well that they love this graphic. It's awesome. So oh, good. this, is a, good, this good. is a keeper and it's a great addition to the slideshow for sure. Good. I'm glad. I think, yes, people were just visually for them to understand it. They're like, I just, they scare me because I don't know what they do. And there's not a level attached to them. There's just a number and I don't, I don't know. So um, another great way that I is salon meetings for hairdressers out there, if you want to get on your owner's good side or maybe salon owners out there, um, a great way to do a salon meeting, right, is grab one of those ponytails that your salon has cut off for someone that donated, right? And put it little tape sections, take little strips, take six little strips and have the team mix tiny little batches, right? Remember it's two to two and a half or one to two and a half. So if I do four grams of 12, one, one, four plus four is eight and half of four is two, which is 10, right? So I could do four grams of 12, one, one to 10 grams of 40 volume, right? wipe it on that strand. Next strand, same thing. Four grams of 12, one, 10 grams of 40 volume, all on like a natural level five or a natural level six. I think six is better. Um, five, you're always going to have quite a bit of warmth left in the hair, but sometimes that's that perfect way to, to lift and get that beautiful caramel on darker levels too. But then they all have it and there's a visual in the salon. So it could be like a little work, work, uh, working launch or working meeting. I see there's so a couple I, more. Oh, sorry, Jesse. I think you answered that, but somebody typed in and said, ideal natural level for the use of high lift. Is it a six? Yes. 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 Six and seven. Um, seven is perfect, obviously, but six. Yes. I have quite a few sixes, especially isolated in a foil. Um, absolutely gorgeous. I always say two. 12 series are like, a sunshiny, um, Reese Witherspoon blonde, right? Um, bleach is like Gwen Stefani. Okay. So I always try to have visuals, um, of my clients, right? So another visual I give a lot is, um, cold butter. Cold butter is achievable with 12 series, right? Um, white butterframe cross frosting is going to be your bleach. So if you are looking to have these bright, beautiful, golden, gold wheat um, reflection in the hair, 12 series is your best friend. If you are looking to just lift hair to paper white um, or make it silver, or you want absolutely no warmth in the hair, then bleach is, is the tool that you need to use. But I know for me and a lot of the majority of clients, that I'm so glad the gray trend is going away, but it's not gray, flat, ashy, paper, white hair is not always the most complimentary on certain 
skin types and um, ages. So I think a little, a little warmth, you know, there's nothing wrong with warmth. I always say to my clients, I just want to make it this beautiful, um, reflective. I want you to, I want it to have this really soft glow, right? I never say warm, even though that's what I'm going to do, right? It's finding that perfect verbiage with clients too, that they think is sexy and they want, they want it, right? So clear neutral booster, I told you guys, there's a million uses for this. We're going to go through these. Um, if you are looking to create a shade um, that doesn't exist, right? Maybe there's, we have 753, right? It's a, this beautiful mahogany. We had a lot of stylists that were like, oh, I wish they would make an 853. It would be the perfect rose gold. Um, you can make it with neutral. So a quarter of the formula needs to be replaced with neutral and it will create one shade lighter of any of your colors within the permanent line, okay? You can also use it if you wanted to make the red booster a little bit lighter. You wanted to make the blue a little bit lighter. You wanted to make lavender a little bit lighter, right? So 25% of the formula gets replaced with neutral and you will create one level lighter. Um, you can also use it like I was giving an example for these sun-kissed highlights, right? So you can um, isolate them in foil. You can use it for balayage work. It's awesome for removing banding on hair is your neutral to two and a half times 30 or 40 volume. I use this all the time. I would say that isolated in a foil on virgin hair, you can easily get four levels of lift with your neutral. So think of it like a lightning cream. And then on tinted hair, it's really hard to give a level um, of lift because it really depends on their texture, how many layers of color is on their hair, um, all that good stuff. But I mean, I've seen it shift half a level um, to a full level. And I, when I'm the client I'm thinking of right now, she was like a tinted layered level five. We got about a half level of lift, but I have some clients that were like a level seven and I easily saw a full one to one and a half levels of lift isolated in a foil over um, previously colored hair. So it just depends on what you're working on. I also, you guys think about these balayages that are going on. Everything's kind of evolving, but we're definitely seeing um, more lightness coming up to the scalp, but the lightness does, isn't necessarily the same color that's out on the ends. Everybody still wants that lived in look. It, it makes um, a perfect tool to melt some of your um, neutral and 30 out into a 20 and powdered lightener, give you this beautiful melty look or a neutral out into a 12 series, okay? Could you take, um, say 18 grams of neutral to two grams of lavender with two and a half times 30 or 40 volume and now have a neutral booster that's like a lifting cream that has a little bit of um, neutralizing effect to it? Absolutely. So um, have fun with it because there's it's one of my favorite tools. Um, another way that I love to use it is creating a third lifting tool. Meaning if I have a, a lightning brightening cream, like my neutral and I have my powdered lightener, right? I get two totally different products, but what if I wanted something that would like fell right in between the two? So you can take your neutral booster, Mix it the way that you always would, right? So one part neutral to two and a half parts, 30 or 40 volume, and then a tiny little sprinkle of your powdered lightener. I say like sprinkle, like you're, I don't do it anymore, but sprinkling a little bit of sugar on your cereal, okay? Just a little dusting, enough that, it, that it's doing something, but if you add too much and you wanna keep the neutral booster in the bowl looking white, or gray, you do not want it to start to turn periwinkle um, blue. You don't want it to look like the color of the powdered lightener, then it's too much. So sometimes I will work a 
a neutral into a neutral sprinkled with my powdered lightener out into my powdered lightener. And you get this beautiful melty effect. Um, just more food for thought that you guys can absolutely do this. Um, and then lastly, if you're looking for a boosted high lift, meaning you're looking for another half level of lift with your 12 series, you can add the neutral in um, to your 12 series and it'll give you extra boost. Just remember when you are using it, um, neutral doesn't know whether it's eating up natural pigments or artificial pigments. So just know that when you add in neutral to your 12 series, you're going to get a brighter um, effect. So it will be lighter, but it will also be brighter, probably a little bit warmer. So keep that in mind. Pastels, we talked about these pastels. You guys, there's so many different things I do with these. I love, love, love them. Rose and 555 is one of my big faves. Um, Rose and 922 is one that I love to use quite a bit. Um, lavender, like I said, I love using it as a control shade. Um, I mean, these are absolutely gorgeous, obviously, on their own. If you want them to be target, right? If you're looking like my client wants that color right there, that exact swatch, then they need to be applied to pre-lightened hair, right? These are called pastels for a reason. Um, they are lighter, they have a more metallic finish and to get the exact target you are seeing, they need to be applied to pre-lightened hair. Um, I would say especially um, cobalt and jade can probably get make it on an eight, on a level eight, lifted to a level eight, but the rest of the shades need to be pre-lightened at least to a level nine. Um, and obviously looking at heaven, you need that hair to get up to a level 10. Okay. Um, rose and blush mixed together. Gorgeous. Rose and lavender mixed together. Gorgeous. I could go on all day. Um, I utilize these very, very often. Um, I love that we have them. I hope they never leave. I just want them to be an extension of our, of our uh, booster line because um, there's just the possibilities in creating shades with these has been really, really fun. The other thing to make a note on you guys is the pastels and the boosters contain absolutely no brown. Okay. So little tidbit, we have these clients now that are trying to go gray, go natural, and that's great. But if we low light them with something like a 0.11, a cool ash, um, it looks great when they leave, but when they come back in, we see this like brown. That's because the cool ashes contain brown. So for me, if I have a gray haired client who's looking to grow out her natural and I'm looking to put some gray or silver into her hair, I would rather put it in. And then when she comes back, I have to redeposit and not deal with brown in the hair. So graphite will be your best friend. Steel will be your best friend and intermixing the two because they, you can also use silver from the boosters. There's no brown at all. So you get those beautiful different dimensions of gray without having a residual brown come back when she's in, in eight, 10, 12 weeks later for another foil. Oops. Don't forget, you've got your Proplex. Proplex can absolutely go in the permanent line in your one through tens and your twelves. This is our bond repair system that helps to um, protect the hair and prevent damage in um, high lift color services. Obviously we can use this in everything, um, our soft color and our cream color, but we're speaking specific to the cream today. So, you guys can take a quick picture of that as far as how much um, product, how much of your bonder goes into your one through 10 shades versus how much bonder goes into your high lift. Okay. Jesse, I have one other question on chat before you. Yes. Um, if you want just cobalt or any pastel on pre lightened, do you use a developer or right from tube? No, they're the permanent line. So they're, they need to be mixed with a developer. And um, for me, I've seen more stick with Tenval is my favorite to use with the uh, pastels because 
just the word pastel should be key to everyone as far as there is no brown. Brown is what anchors color into hair and gets it to hold and stick. So the pastels do leave the hair over time, um, which is a good thing. Um, I mean, the pastels are definitely not most colors that grow out of anyone's hair. So I, I like that it leaves and then I can play when she comes back in. So um, 10 volume for sure. And then you can mix it normal, um, one to one and a half. Um, I like to try to get more density and, and stick. So I like to go equal parts with the pastels, but I would say equal parts to one, uh, one to one and a half. Um, we have, there's some of the literature out there does talk about how you can go all the way to one part color to three parts developer, but you're shearing it out to the point she's going to get like two shampoos and then it's gone. So you could do it, but that just seems like a lot of work for something that's only going to last one or two shampoos. So hopefully that answers that question. So again, um, Proplex um, can absolutely be used in the permanent line and can be used in the high lift line. Um, some people are like, well, if I'm just doing 20 volume on my client, do I really need Proplex? Um, I definitely have clients that have that. I say this with love, like frog fur, like it's so, so fine um, of hair that like even just 10 volume and color makes her hair mad. So Proplex, um, absolutely, you will see differences um, by utilizing it on your clients. So yes. So when you guys are using your permanent line, just make sure that you are checking to see what that natural level is, that you're figuring out what the target shade is that you've went in and decided based in different areas, what's the percentage of gray and is that gray resistant? What's the texture of the hair and are there porosity issues or concerns, right? If I close my eyes and pinch from scalp all the way out on any client, you can tell where it can take permanent and then where there's gonna be a different product like soft color if the hair has porosity issues, so. That's kind of it in a nutshell, you guys. Um, we can go into doing a little bit of formulation. Um, if we have like some brand new users on that just want to go through it. Um, I'm going to let Natalie see um, if you guys want to give thumbs up. Or if you guys have specific questions, um, specific formulation that you would like um, to go over or you're planning on emailing Natalie and then um, we can reach out to you. Natalie, how do you want to go about that? So if you guys have um, specific questions for me, please, you can email me and I will put you in touch with Jesse at some point. Um, I think that's probably the easiest way because I feel like there are probably so many questions, not that you, you, you know you don't know what you're doing, but there's just a lot that goes into this and I'm sure Sure you've all run into circumstances where you'd like a little extra help. So email me directly and we'll put you in touch with any of our artistic team, Jesse or any of the other three, and we can get some answers for you. If there's anything that you specifically want right now, that's just a general permanent cream question, um, feel free to pop it in the chat quick. Um, and we'll try to get that addressed right now over the last few minutes. Perfect. Thanks, Nat. Oh, you're welcome. So yeah, if you guys have, um, I'm gonna actually take 30 seconds um, and use the restroom really quick. So if you guys have a question and you wanna take a couple seconds to type it out, um, you have a minute to do that. And then I'll come back and check the chat box and we'll go from there. For those of you that um, this was it for you and you got what you needed answers. Um, for answers, thank you so much for joining us today. And Hopefully I'll get to see some people face to face here in the future. No. no I'll be thank you, Jesse. I'll be here just to monitor just in case. Okay.
I'm back. So I'm gonna check the chat box here quick. Nothing in the chat box for you. All right. Well, then we're good to go. I think so, unless somebody has something that they wanna throw right now at her quick. All right. It was that good. No, it was that good. You were that thorough. <laughs> awesome. You are awesome as always. Tons of great information. Good, good. Well, have, an awesome, have an awesome Monday. Thanks, you too. We appreciate you. So thanks for informing us on everything. Have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye.